Hello and welcome to the Following Truth Bible Study. I'm your host LJ. In this video we're going to be looking at is the image of Jesus based upon Cesare Borgia? Remember if you like this study please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel if you would like to be kept up to date with any future videos that I do. Now many Hebrew Israelites claim that the image of Jesus that is commonly used throughout Christendom today was actually modelled upon a man named Cesare Borgia. They will often use a picture that has two side-by-side -side images to support their claims, something like this that you can see on the screen, one of Cesare, one of Jesus. Now they claim that Jesus was a so-called black man and that his image has been whitewashed by the church. But how true are these claims? In this study, I will show that the claims made by the Hebrew Israelites are not based upon facts, but assertions made in spite of the facts. They have an agenda to keep, and dealing with the actual facts is not part of that agenda. They simply only give the information that they wish to use and twist the truth to make it appear to support their claims. The truth. Firstly, Let's find out who Cesare Borgia was. Cesare Borgia was born on the 13th of September 1475 in Italy. Now this is nearly 1500 years after Jesus lived. He was the illegitimate son of Rodrigo de Borgia, who would later become Pope Alexander VI. His mother was Giovanni di Catania, better known as Vanosa di Catania, one of the many mistresses of Rodrigo. Now, Cesare Borgia died on the 12th of March, 1507. Now, this date is important. It is claimed that Pope Alexander VI did not like the images of Jesus as a Jewish man, and so commissioned Leonardo da Vinci to produce new paintings of Jesus which used his son, Cesare, as the model to base the images upon. After doing so, he ordered the destruction of the images that depicted Jesus as a Semitic-looking man. Now, these claims are attributed to having first been made by French novelist Alexandre Dumas. Yes, the same Alexandre Dumas that wrote The Three Musketeers and The Count of Monte Cristo. Now, the Hebrew Israelites simply follow these claims made by Dumas as fact. They do not actually prove the claim beyond making the assertion itself. And then they use these facts in their own argument. Now, try, try it. Ask them to prove this claim and see what evidence that you are given. But Alexandre Dumas did not, however, make these claims at all. In his writing, Celebrated Crimes, Volume 1, the Borgias, which is where the claim is supposedly found, Alexander makes no mention of the image of Jesus being modelled on Cesare. There is no mention of Pope Alexander VI, dislike of the Jewish-looking Jesus. No mention of his commission of Leonardo da Vinci to paint Jesus in the likeness of Cesare, or his destruction of images that portrayed Jesus as Semitic. The claims have no factual basis in reality at all. They are simply unsubstantiated and baseless statements that must be taken as fact without any investigation. Now, I challenge anyone to provide the evidence of where uh, Alexandre Dumas made these claims. I have his book here, uh, The Borgias, and I have read the book and I cannot find where he makes these claims. So, if uh, any Hebrew Israelite would like to prove me wrong and tell me where we can find this claim, tell me the book, chapter, and page number that we can find these claims and where they are made. You can read the entire book at my website, www.followingtruth.com. I don't ask you to just take my word for it. Read the book for yourself and look and see if you can find the evidence where he makes these claims. Let's also have a look 
at the image used by the Hebrew Israelites a little bit uh, closer. This painting used by the Hebrew Israelites to support their claim is called Portrait of a Gentleman. The painting is traditionally believed to be a painting of Cesare Borgia, although actually nobody knows for certain if it really is. This painting was painted in 1513 by Alberto Malone. This was six years after Cesare Borgia had died. Remember, he died in 1507. I said the date would be important. Cesare most certainly did not sit for this portrait. Pope Alexander VI was also long dead by this time, having died in 1503, and could not have commissioned the image himself. Now, it cannot go without notice that the picture does not depict the gentleman, even if this is Cesare Borgia, with a full beard. The image is of a man with a goatee style beard and moustache, not the beard that Jesus is usually depicted as having. The person in the picture has dark eyes also, whereas Jesus is usually depicted with blue eyes. Also, the hair is very different, as Jesus is commonly depicted with much lighter coloured hair than the man in the picture. While the image of Jesus and the image of Cesare are similar, similar as in they are both depicted in their images as being of pale complexion with some facial hair and long hair on their head, it does not follow that the image of Jesus is dependent upon the image of Cesare. In fact, again, the actual facts would disprove the claims. We do have a Bible verse that would support Jesus, the Messiah, having a beard. In a prophecy about the Messiah, we see that the Messiah gave his cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. Isaiah 56. I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. Now, while the Renaissance period did produce many images of Jesus, the image of Jesus with beard, moustache, long hair, and a more pale complexion was in circulation long before the Renaissance period, and therefore before Cesare, or in fact his father, were even born, a long time before. We have an image from the 4th century which can be found in the Catacomb of Commedia on the Via Ostiensis. It is one of the earliest depictions of a bearded Jesus. Notice also that this image depicts Jesus with a long hair and a moustache. The image certainly does not give Jesus a dark complexion. The following image is from the 5th century, approximately 400 to 410 AD. It is of Christ Pantocrator. It is a Roman mosaic found in the church of Santa Pudenziana in Rome. Here is a close-up of Jesus in the image. Jesus has long hair, a beard, and a moustache. Again, he does not have a dark complexion. Now, this image is called Pantocrator. It is from the 6th century AD. That is approximately 900 years or so before Cesare Borgia lived. Again, Jesus is depicted as having a beard, a moustache, long hair, and of a pale complexion. Here is a Coptic image from the 8th century that comes from the Apollo Monastery in Bawit, Egypt. It is now housed in the Louvre Museum in Paris. It is called Icon of Christ and Abbot Mena. Jesus healing a leper is an image from the medieval period dated to the 12th or 13th century. This is 200 to 300 years before Cesare. It is a mosaic found in the Cathedral of the Assumption in Montreal, Sicily. These are just a sample of the images of Jesus being depicted as having full facial hair, long hair upon his head, and of a paler complexion that could be found in existence before the 15th century. In each one of these pictures, the Jesus depicted is easily recognisable and resembles the depictions that we have of Jesus today. 
even if the pictures of this era were styled upon Cesare Borgia, for which there is absolutely no credible evidence, this would not at all support the claim that the image that is commonly used by Christendom today is based upon him, or that this was at the bequest of his father. All this would actually demonstrate is that Cesare Borgia resembled the already used depicted image of Jesus. The image of a long-haired, bearded, pale Jesus had been in use for over 1,000 years before the image used by the Hebrew Israelites to assist their claims came into existence. It is also worthy of note that Cesare Borgia suffered from syphilis that left him so badly disfigured that he wore a leather mask to cover half of his face. It may very well be that the common depiction of Cesare Borgia is actually based upon Jesus rather than the other way around to hide the disfigurement and make him have a more uh, credible uh, image. While I wouldn't go as far as to categorically claim this as a truth, it is at least a possibility and is supported by as much evidence as that of the Hebrew Israelites claims none. When correctly analysed, the claim made by Hebrew Israelites just doesn't hold up. Thank you very much for watching. If you would like to uh, see more arguments that I make against the Hebrew Israelites, you can uh, buy my book. It's called The Holy Bible versus the Hebrew Israelites, uh, and I go through many arguments that the Hebrew Israelites make uh, in their assertion that Jesus and the true Israelites are black, uh, and also regarding uh, the white man being e uh, Esau. Uh, so you can buy this book uh, online through Amazon. It's available on most of the Amazon websites, and it's available as an ebook or as a physical book. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on my next video.